So I'm Jonathan Fung. I'm a professor of physics and astronomy here at beautiful UC Irvine. I uh, work in particular on particle physics and cosmology, which is basically seemingly two disparate fields. One is studying the sort of fundamental building blocks of the universe at the smaller scales, and the other is studying the universe as a whole, basically galaxies, galaxy clusters, and sort of the biggest structures we know about. <laughs> I, I don't know. I saw a graduation speech a couple years ago on the web uh, given by David Foster Wallace, which I thought was really interesting. It's always on these uh, best graduation speeches given ever lists. And he starts off by giving this anecdote where he says, there's two young fish swimming along and they pass an older fish. And the older fish says, how do you like the water? And they keep going. And then when they get to the other side, one of the younger fish says to the other one, what the hell is water? And that was a great anecdote to kick off his speech. But it's actually maybe more real than he thinks. It turns out that in our universe, we know that the stuff that we know about, atoms and things, is only about 5% of the universe. And 95% of it is other stuff, including dark matter. And dark matter is actually streaming through us as we speak. So this relates to the fish in the water because it turns out we are, in some sense, swimming through a sea of dark matter, and we don't even know it. And for me, that tells you why you should study or be interested in this sort of work, because you know, how can it be that we don't even understand our environment, the very basics of where we are living, where we, what our world is made out of? And uh, you know, it's basically these questions, where, where are we? Where do we come from? Where are we going? What is the world made of? Are things that I think sort of make us human when we ask them. And uh, that's, I think, the fundamental reason people should be interested in the kind of things that uh, we study in, in physics and astronomy. Well, yeah, for me personally, I've always been interested in sort of finding the ultimate reality, you might call it. <laughs> you know, digging down, always asking why, why, why as a little kid. And this is sort of a field that you end up with if you end up keeping going on like that. And so, um, you know, we're, we're basically finding, so, so you have a, you know, atoms, you know that inside there, there's a, a nucleus with protons and neutrons that make it up. And then inside protons and neutrons are quarks. You know, what are the quarks made out of? Or are there other things that are sort of fundamental like that? And that kind of question is something that's always fascinated me. Um, and then now there's a fascinating connection between particle physics and cosmology because of this fact that we don't know what 95% of the universe is made out of. And so there's this stuff called dark matter and dark energy. And that tells you that the periodic table of the elements, which we know and love, and we thought it was sort of a complete story, is not the whole story. There's something else out there. It's not just made out of atoms. We know that 95% of the universe is something else. And so that's something that really drives me. It's something that I really want to know the answer to. And it's just a fascinating sort of, uh, you know, era of discovery that we could be on right now, trying to figure out what that stuff is made out of. Well, so particle physics is basically, it's often called the study of uh, space, time, energy, and matter. But what it really is, is just trying to figure out what are the fundamental constituents of the universe and how do those things interact. And so we have um, a pretty good idea of what makes up atoms, but we found that there's a lot more in the universe than that. For example, in an atom, there's electrons that go around it. And we know that there are other things that are not electrons, but are kind of like heavy electrons. And so that's kind of weird stuff. It doesn't seem required to make up atoms, yet uh, it exists and we know about these things very well. And there's a lot of other things that are kind of like that. And so particle physics is trying to understand what all the constituents are, but more than that, try to place them in sort of a unified framework to figure out how they're all related, why seemingly inessential things are essential, why um, you know there's various structures that we see, why are they like that, and uh, try to find patterns and, and find basically the, the basic laws of nature. Cosmology is uh, basically the study of the universe as a whole. 
And so it's kind of going in the opposite direction. So I previously said particle physics is drilling down into smaller and smaller things, finding the ultimate constituents of things. Cosmology is going bigger and bigger. So you start with the solar system, and then we know that there's a, a galaxy, the Milky Way that we're in, and then galaxies form together to form clusters. And then there's lots of clusters, and then there's the universe as a whole. And so cosmology is trying to figure out what is the sort of um, behavior or evolution of the universe as a whole. So for example, we know now that the universe is expanding. It's getting bigger and bigger. And if you play that movie backwards, then the universe gets smaller and smaller. And we want to know where did it come from? And for example, the study of the Big Bang is an essential part of cosmology, trying to figure out what were the earliest moments of the universe's creation. For research and faith, for me, they're very intimately connected, um, and probably in two ways. One, so I'm a professor, so of course I do research. But the other thing is I teach and uh, help sort of organize and run a university. Uh, Work, working on committees and things like that. I think a university is a fascinating place because it's like you meet so many different people. You meet obviously people who are young and uh, they seem to keep getting younger, uh, but also older people, my age, you know, senior emeritus professors and staff. And then you meet people from all around the world. You meet people from um, totally different backgrounds. And it's just an amazing sort of mishmash of people. And so my faith impacts how I try to work with people and, and sort of how I think about the diversity of uh, the people here. You know, when I look at the Bible, I see uh, Jesus way before his time and the way he interacted with people of various different backgrounds, different religions, uh, women and men. And that's something I try to emulate and that has a deep impact on, you know, how I try to act. Um, I don't always live up to what I hope are my standards, but I think I'm better than I would have been if I didn't have that example. And then in terms of my research, my faith has actually a less direct but still very, very strong impact. Um, in physics, people, well, if you go back into the history of physics, various famous physicists will say various things like they're trying to read the mind of God or see the hand of God, various people from Einstein on down to say things like that. But um, there are also physicists who actually see that as a real goal to really, they believe in a God and they want to understand God's mind and God's thinking. People like uh, Newton and Maxwell and Faraday, you know, just giants of my field. And for me, i have more toward that side. You know, for me, it really is sort of a, um, a uh, deep honor to be able to study these things and to sort of understand uh, how the universe was created. And so I think my faith puts that in perspective and uh, gives me, if anything, even more of a, a reverence and a seriousness in which I approach the questions that I study in my work. Clearly, the sort of origins of the universe are something that is now a scientific discipline, a scientific question, but also is a spiritual, religious question. And so reconciling this or trying to understand how they interplay is a very important thing. For me, I mean, I think it's easily reconciled if you have a certain view of, um, you know, the religious story and the scientific story. <laughs> so, you know, certain views are going to be very hard to reconcile, of course. But for me, they, they interconnect very beautifully. Um, so the idea that the universe was created was actually um, probably seem kind of crazy from a scientific point of view 100 years ago because people looked out, they looked out at the stars and they saw that everything looked stationary. Everything was always the way it was and it probably was that way forever. And so there was no beginning, it just always was. And what has happened in the last 100 years with the development of uh, general relativity, Einstein's great achievement, and cosmology, understanding the universe is expanding, because we know that that seeming static nature of the universe is totally um, a myth. I mean, we know that the universe has expanded and is a very dynamical thing. And so this idea that the universe um, you know, had a beginning is a very recent thing, but it's actually supported by the scientific uh, you know, work. 
and exactly how that beginning worked, whether there was this theory of inflation, it's sometimes called. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of details we're trying to work out, and those are exciting things in research right now. But just the general picture that there was sort of a early period, which you could think of as a creation, uh, and we emerged from this dense, hot universe. That to me is actually a, a great sign of concordance between uh, scientific ways of thinking about the beginning and uh, the, the, uh, the, the biblical story and other religious stories like that. And it's, it's really important what you said before, which is that um, science itself kind of emerged from religious thinking. I mean, uh, I think C.S. Lewis said, you know, the only reason you would want to be a scientist is if you thought there was some order in the universe so that you had something to figure out. And the early people who thought there were order were people who thought there was an orderer, someone who ordered it, namely God. And so if you look at the early history of science, some of the great, many of the great um, contributors uh, were you know, very deeply religious. And uh, the Big Bang emerged from the you know, work of a Catholic priest. And uh, even up to the present, some of the great people that we uh, sort of revere for their scientific achievements are, are Christians. And so this is something that's maybe not as well appreciated, but it's definitely true. I would really like people to have a proper respect for science. And by proper, I don't mean an, like an infinite amount of respect for science. What I mean is not too much and not too little. I think that there are people who um, have too little respect for science. So for example, if we hear about, you know, talk about the climate, and um, we know that, you know, most scientists, the overwhelming majority of them, believe that the climate is being changed by people. Or we also know that people don't believe that there's a connection between autism and, and uh, vaccines. And people ought to take that very seriously. You know, when there's scientific consensus, that means something. There's a huge premium placed on finding something that no one knows. So, for example, if you could compellingly develop a connection between autism and the vaccine, you would become famous. And so there's a huge amount of incentive to do that. And if no one does that who's in the field, that should tell you something. And so I think it's important that people have, you know, proper respect for science in that sense. On the other hand, though, some people have too much respect for science. People think that science will solve all our problems and everything can be known by science. And if it's not known by science, it's just not knowable. And this is just, uh, to me, too much. First of all, science is in a very early stage. People might not think that, but for me, I go to my office every day and I sit down and I confront this fact that 95% you know, of the universe is unknown. This just smacks me in the face every single day. And it's hard to be too arrogant about how wonderful you are, how smart you or humankind are when you have that fact in front of you. And uh, similarly, there's, you know, there's, there's places all over where we have holes in our knowledge. It's not just sort of this outer space sort of 95% of the universe thing, but like quantum mechanics, which makes you know, cell phones work and probably you're viewing this using something that uses quantum mechanics. Um, we don't know how quantum mechanics works. You know, some of the leading ideas think that as soon as you observe something, the universe splits into different parts. I mean, these are just crazy ideas. We really don't know how it works. And so it's important that people realize, I think, that you know, science is not the be-all and end-all. There's much more to understanding life and the world than science. And for me, uh, religious faith plays a very important part in sort of filling in that gap. There's also a lot of really cool little ideas that are being pursued and are very interesting. So one I'm working on right now is called PHASER, which is short for the fa uh, Forward Search Experiment. And, um, this is a group that started with just, I mean, there were four of us who wrote a paper and then it grew and grew. It's big by maybe some people's standards, but it's nowhere as big as the biggest collaborations. We have maybe 40, 40 people working on it now. And it's uh, something that we're doing, which will be done very quickly in a few years, not in a few decades. Um, and I'm really passionate about that. I'm spending most of my time working on that. And you know what we're looking for is evidence of dark matter or what are now called dark sectors, that there's a whole collection of particles that sort of don't really shine at us, don't talk to us, and yet they make up you know, much of the matter in the universe. 
And so we're still trying to figure out what that stuff is. And this little experiment, which is being built in Geneva right now, um, may in fact tell us the answer to that, or at least provide the sort of first tip of the iceberg view of that. And so I'm very passionate about that. Uh, that's what I'm working on day in, day out, and having a fantastic time working with some fantastic collaborators. <laughs> I, I don't know, that, that question might be above my pay grade, but I, I don't think so, and for now that's good enough for me. <laughs> the fact that I don't think we do, I'm going with that. <laughs>